Did you know that the Bible talks about bugs and frogs? I found them in a really interesting story in the Bible about Pharaoh, the wicked king of Egypt, and Moses, the brave prophet of God. Today, we're going to make bugs and frogs with rocks and pebbles, like the story of the plagues in Egypt. So, if you want to make some bugs and frogs, then you'll need some small rocks, paper, and a pencil, and maybe even a marker. Now I have another video that you can watch where we talk about where to find the rocks, what shapes to get, and how to build your rock art collection. So make sure you see that video as well. So grab your rocks and your supplies and make sure you have a towel to protect the surface that you're working on. And let's get started. Let's start with some cool little frogs. We can make a frog with just one rock. That's what makes frogs so fun, is you could choose any rock that you have. You could even use a strange long rock if you wanted, and we'll try a few of those out. So let's just start with one rock, and I'd like to use a pencil because we're going to draw the arms and legs instead of having to use rocks for arms and legs, because rocks for arms and legs are really hard with frogs because those don't really look like arms and legs of a frog, do they? I think we have a sunshine there. So let's draw them instead. And I'm gonna turn the, this rock around so the narrow part's on top and you can just get a pencil to in case you need to erase it. And there's his little arm, just one line. And then we'll make some toes. Now three toes are really cute, but in real life, frogs have four toes on the front with their arms. We're just gonna make three. And then what makes it really fun is if you put a little ball at the end of each toe. Isn't that getting cuter? There, that's pretty easy, huh? And that's the frog putting his arms out like that. And now let's do some legs that come out. Now you could do a straight leg like we just did with the arms and then draw your little toes, but let's erase it. That's why I like to use a pencil because if we do a little bit curved, like just, curve it out and come down. Oh, it gets looking even cuter, but you can go either way. And then we're gonna put four on the bottom cause just because we can and it's fun. Look at that. And let's add some little toes. And so little balls at the end. Now this is more like a tree frog. There are pond frogs and tree frogs. Tree frogs have these sticky little toes so they can climb up the tree. And pond frogs have the web toes so they can swim in the water. Okay, that's looking pretty cute. Now, once you like what you've drawn, or you could erase and fix it like we just did, then we can go in with our marker and make it thicker. You don't have to do this part. I just think it makes it a little bit cuter. So we'll just draw on top of what we already made. Add the little balls to the feet. Now you might want to stop the video if I go too fast here. And then you can go in and finish this up and then turn the video back on. But you see how easy that is? And then these legs, we just made them a little bit curvy. You don't have to do that either. You can just make them straight if you want. And little balls on there so they can climb the tree. And their little toes with balls on the end. Now you notice I didn't trace my lines perfectly. And that's the fun thing about art. We don't have to be perfect. We can do it lots of different ways, and I like to use a pencil so we can erase the stuff we didn't want. Now, let's put the rock on and see how it looks. Oh, that is so cute. It looks just like a frog. Now, if you put some eyeballs on the frog, it gets even cuter. So let's just add those. You wanna use our pencil again so we can erase if we need to? I'm just gonna put a dot here and a dot here where I want the eyes, and I can take the rock away, and then I can put circles for those eyes. And now that I like where those are, once I put the frog back on, I can use the marker and we'll draw those eyes. Just circles, just a little ball. And then we'll put our rock back on. Oh my goodness, that's so cute. Now, one little frog is super cute when you find them in nature, but what would happen if a whole bunch of frogs all came in and you had frogs, 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 and they came into your house and got on your dining room table or they're outside in your sandbox and they were everywhere? Well, too many frogs is not fun. 
And that's what happened in the book of Exodus in the Old Testament was the Lord sent lots and lots and lots of frogs because the wicked King Pharaoh was being mean to the Lord's people. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. But what if we use different rocks for our frog? I want you to see that lots of different kinds of rocks work. Look at that one. Okay, that is a super cute frog. But what if we use this little tiny one? That works too. How about this guy? Do you see that probably any of your round rocks are gonna make a cute frog? You could even go sideways and your frog is fatter and he's super cute, like he landed and blop, he spread out. So you can use all kinds of rocks for your frog. So I think if you practice a whole bunch, then you'll be able to make your frogs better and better. And the more you make their legs squiggly down here, the more fun they get too. Now, if you happen to have teeny tiny little rocks, and I've got some little ones. Now, I collect my rocks. Every time I go outside, I look for more rocks. And sometimes when I see it just gravel, that's really the best kind to find little tiny rocks. Now, what if we use these for eyeballs? Let's stick those on and see what it looks like. What do you think? Okay, is that a cute frog or what? <laughs> I love it. So that's how you make a frog. And we, on the same page, could go ahead and make a whole bunch of frogs. But the story that this comes from in the Bible, in the Old Testament, is about Moses, Pharaoh, and the Israelites. Have you heard of those terms before? Pharaoh just means a king. And he was the king of Egypt. You probably know about the pyramids in Egypt. You've seen some pictures of pyramids out there. Well, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, thought he was really special, and he even thought he was like God, and he didn't think there was any other God. So Moses was sent by God to tell Pharaoh, let my people go, because he was being so mean to the Israelite nation people, and Pharaoh wouldn't do it. So God said, well, I have all power. So God sent all of these frogs, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of frogs, to show Pharaoh that he was all powerful. But did Pharaoh listen? Nope, Pharaoh did not listen. So do you know what happened? Well, God sent another plague, another miserable experience, and we are going to show another plague. He actually did 10 plagues. God had to give Pharaoh 10 chances, and Pharaoh still did not listen. So another plague that he did was grasshoppers. So you can take any long rock and make a grasshopper out of it. And I thought this was the neatest one, so I wanted to show you this one first. That's the grasshopper body. Now, if we didn't have more rocks, we could just draw the rest. And we'll do that now. Or if we had more rocks, we could use like a long circle, it's called an oval, and use it for the head. And if we had a rock for his big giant leg that helps him jump really far, we could stick that on there. Is that starting to look like a grasshopper to you? Kind of fun. Now, I don't have just stick rocks that I could use for his leg, so I'm going to have to draw that. But let's draw all of it because you may not have your rock collection yet that's big enough. So that's what's super fun about drawing with rocks. You just draw the parts that you don't have rocks for. So he needs a head right here, right? So we could just draw a circle there. Let's just draw an oval like this. Can you draw an oval? Pretty easy. And then we can stick the rock next to it. Looks like his head is way too tiny, so let's make the oval bigger. We'll just go right alongside the outside because we're just going to color it in with our marker anyway. That's a better size, isn't it? And then if he, we want his jumping leg back here, you just need a triangle. Can you draw a triangle? And if you drew a tiny little triangle inside of it, then you've got a thicker leg. That's looking pretty good. And now he, this is his leg coming down, so we'll come all the way through to the bottom and we'll give him a little foot. And we can give him another leg here or we could say it's hiding back there. We'll give him a little leg and a feet here. Is that starting to look like a grasshopper? So easy when you just have one long rock. Let's go ahead and see if my rocks that I have will fit on there. If I had rocks, I could use those instead. Or, if I've got a big triangle and a long one, then I can just use my marker to color in the other parts. And sometimes when you move the rocks out of the way, it's easier. 
Now again, you should stop the video if you need a chance to try out your different rocks or color in your pieces that you've drawn. Now this is a plague. A plague is a miserable experience. And if you had one grasshopper, that would be okay. But if all of a sudden millions of grasshoppers came in, that would be miserable. And that's what happened. When Pharaoh wouldn't listen to God when he sent the frogs, he had to send all kinds of other things and grasshoppers, locusts is what they called them back then. Even now. And so he sent the locusts and the locusts ate all the food and they got into the grain and everything and it was awful. And there's your grasshopper. Now, Let's try a grasshopper with an easier rock because that's a gigantic rock and sometimes you just can't find them that size. So here are some other ones we could do it with. And there's also a little trick. If your rock kind of has a bowed area on the bottom and it's straight on top, it'll make your grasshopper look even better. Hmm. Let's, here's a smaller one that you might find more easily. Let's try that. Do you see how it's bowed on the bottom? So that will make it really fun. And then I have all these extra little rocks up here, little circles that I could use for heads. And then we can have another triangle that we could use. You need tall triangles, they work best. So we could stick a tall triangle on there and then we can draw the other parts for his legs. Do you see how easy this is? And then there's one more thing that makes it super cute and that's his little antennae or antenna. And you can just stick out a little curved line there and put a ball at the end. And just do one right next to it. And a little ball. That makes it look even more like a grasshopper. Isn't that fun? So let's try that with this guy. We'll put a little, little antenna. Now again, this is just two grasshoppers. But what if you had millions of grasshoppers? Oh, it'd be miserable. So do you think Pharaoh said, Okay, okay, I see God, you're all powerful and you can do everything and I'm not God. Do you think Pharaoh said that? He did not. And so after God sent the locusts or the grasshoppers, he also sent flies. Do you wanna make some flies? Okay, this is how we make grasshoppers. Let's put those away. We'll take that off. Let's just make one more. So there were 10 plagues that God sent and we're only doing three. So here are flies. Flies are super easy. So one of the shapes of rocks that you can be collecting are circles because we use all kinds of circles and ovals, anything round we use like a lot. And so here's all the ones that I found out in my backyard and at the park are all these. Let's see. If I were to make a fly, I want to get two that are very similar to each other, just like that. And then if I got a little circle for a head, I could stick that in there. Is that starting to look like a fly? It's like done. Isn't that so easy? And then if you wanted to put little arms on the fly, it will make them look even more like a fly. And to do arms, we're just doing zigzags. That's a zigzag or a lightning bolt. Can you do a zigzag? Go ahead and try it out. You go align one direction and then go the other direction and just keep going different directions. That's a zigzag. That's what we'll use for our legs. So we'll just stick it out like this, do our zigzag, come in. Do you see that? And that, and put a little ball at the end. Again, those little balls at the end of things make things cute. And now we have a fly. Pretty cool. That's easy. So we could take any of our longish rocks, these are ovals, and stick them together. Try to match them. So when you get your whole collection out, you'll like say these two fit together. Do these two fit together? Mm, this one's too big. That one's a little littler, so they don't match. So we wanna use one that matches. And now we've got four flies already. We just wanna put little circles. Now, if you don't have circle rocks, what do you do? You just draw it in. So I'll draw a little circle for a head and I'll put my little rocks next to it. And that's how I can do my fly, but I do have a circle, so I'm gonna stick it on there. Now you might be saying, hey, Patty, that's not a circle, that's almost a triangle. And I would say, you're right. We could probably use triangles too for heads. With rock art, because the shapes are not exact, 
you just keep trying different ones until you like what you have. And I think it's fun to put circles in there. And then little leg zigzag, little zigzag. And then we could get our marker to make it darker if we wanted to. What do you think? You're telling me these don't match, aren't you? Well, you're right. Do you think this one could be the match for that one? Close enough, don't you think? That's close enough. And then what about this big giant head? It's too big. How about that one? Is that too tiny? It might be too small. Do you see how you just keep trying different rocks until you like what you have? And then you can add some legs, zigzag. There you go. Now, imagine if there weren't just four flies, but there were millions of flies that came in and they were everywhere. And Pharaoh still said, I'm not letting your Israelite people go. And God said, you're going to be sorry because I'm going to give you more and more plagues. And he did. And Pharaoh never, ever obeyed God. And in the end, it didn't work out so good for Pharaoh. So I hope that you will try out making frogs, flies, and locusts or grasshoppers and learn more about how powerful God really is. He has all power and he can deliver his people. And in the end, as you'll find out, he did deliver the Israelite people. Okay, thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. Okay.